Hey there, today we're going to be taking a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. Now we're going to be taking a look at this in different configurations. We are going to be running the game at the lowest in-game graphics settings at 1080p full resolution, but we're going to be running it on different memory configurations, 8GB, 12GB, and 16GB. Now keep in mind that we are essentially running the 12GB with a misconfiguration of 8GB and 4GB. The reason I'm doing it like this is because there are systems out there that only have 4 gigabytes gigabytes of RAM soldered on or sometimes it'll be eight gigabytes of RAM but in those cases you can at least throw in another eight gigabyte stick and get to 16 but if you only have four gigabytes of soldered RAM you're going to end up with a mismatched configuration and what ends up happening in that scenario is the fact that now only part of your RAM is running in dual channel so we're going to see if that actually affects any of the performance here and as you can see with the built-in benchmark here we can see what the performance difference across all settings are with just the stock 15 watt TDP and you can see here that there is a gap between 8 gigabytes, 12 gigabytes, and 16 gigabytes, but it's nothing drastic. And really, at the stock 15 watt TDP, none of these are really providing a great gaming experience. You're really not going to be able to play this game very functionally. Now, of course, you can drop the resolution with all of these, but for the case of comparison here, we are just going to be doing the full 1080p resolution. One thing I do want to keep in mind, though, is that during the benchmark, no matter what setting I was using, as you get to the final scene when things start to load in you get a crazy amount of pop in when it comes to the mountains it happens with pretty much every setting across the board no matter what even when i raise the tdp and we're going to take a look at what raising the tdp does for the performance in general right now so with a 25 watt tdp we do actually start to see a slight increase in the gap between 8 gigabytes of ram and 16 gigabytes of ram the biggest benefit here really is in the improvements in one percent lows now it's not a a drastic improvement but dropping down from 29 fps down to 20 is going to feel pretty brutal in comparison to being at 34 fps and dropping down to 24 so there is definitely improvement there and really the increase in the one percent lows is the most welcome aspect because that's what you want the most if you see an improvement in averages but no improvement in one percent lows effectively you're not really getting any improvement in the overall gaming experience because the one percent lows are the lowest frames that you end up getting so it essentially gives you a range on where your fps is going to fluctuate if you're fluctuating from a already barely playable fps down to something abysmal that is practically in the teens it is going to drag down the experience so if you're on a system right now that has eight gigabytes of ram and keep in mind that the eight gigabytes of ram that you're seeing here is with dual channel all configurations here are with dual channel there is no single channel here so this is already the best case scenario for eight gigabytes if you're on a system that has a upgradable RAM slots and you can go to 16 at the price of DDR4 right now, this is actually a really worthwhile upgrade, especially because if you're someone that's still trying to play newer titles on a system like this, those 16 gigabytes or even 32 gigabytes, because 32 gigabytes is now, at least here in the United States, well under a hundred dollars. With 3200 megahertz kits running around 60 to 70 dollars in price, and really you can practically get any RAM kit because of the fact that Sodim is pretty much just completely spec to JDEX speeds, there is really no major difference between different RAM brands or anything like that. They're not doing their own overclocking. They're not making their own XMP profiles or anything like that. All they have to do is just hit the very, very loose JDEX speed. So they don't need to be aggressive with their timings or anything like that. They just pretty much need to hit a spec that DDR4 can hit pretty easily at this point. So I would recommend just shopping for whatever is the kit that is the cheapest. Obviously though, use your better judgment and don't go with a kit that is from a brand that is completely unknown to you. I did want to test out pumping a full 30 watts of power into this system and see if that actually gives us any uplift in terms of performance. We did not see any improvements in the averages across the board, but there were improvements in 1% lows, though minor ones. Pretty much margin of error across all of them. If you actually pay attention to the TDP numbers on the screen, you'll see that they're not actually hitting 30. You might be wondering, well, what's wrong there? is the system just not really capable of using that well no what's actually happening is that the game itself is actually not very multi-threaded at all you can see that across all configurations we are using very little of the cpu usually less than 10 percent so that means that pretty much just one core is active here and actually doing any work whatsoever now if you pay attention to the gpu it is pretty much maxed out and it's been pretty much maxed out across all configurations so what that means is that the extra 
extra TDP is actually going into the CPU because the GPU already has everything that it needs. But if we're not using more than just 10% of the CPU at best, one core clocking up to four gigahertz on here is not going to use up the remainder of the TDP that we have here. Now you'll see in some cases, yeah, we are getting close to that 30, but it's not really a long-term thing. It's only for a brief period and then things drop back down because again, the CPU just has nothing to do while the GPU was already fully maxed out and it can't take any more power because it's already reaching its max clock speed. I mean, I could set the TDP to this system all the way up to 45 if I wanted to, but the system's not going to use 45 watts if there is no need for it. The GPU is not going to use more power. It's not going to clock up higher. So what I would really just recommend is if you're looking to play this game, I would recommend definitely dropping your resolution from 1080p, even across the board, going down to 900p is going to be more than enough to make this a more playable experience across all the, these configurations. What I will say is that if you plan on keeping this system any longer or maybe hand it down to a family member now that you've maybe had it for a couple of years or something like that, upgrade the RAM, upgrade it to 16 gigabytes. It's extremely cheap nowadays and it might actually just bring out a little bit more life out of a system like this. But anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video useful or entertaining. If you did, be sure to subscribe and of course, check out the Amazon affiliate links down below if you're interested in picking up a system with a chip like this, or I would actually recommend something a little bit more powerful. A 5600H is really fantastic if you're on a budget, but really the 6600H and higher are just a league above where it might be worth your time. But anyways, I will catch you guys in the next one.